Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you all about how I set out to read all of my unread books in 2022. I'm gonna be telling you why I did it. I'm gonna be telling you how I did it. I'm gonna be telling you all the statistics about the books behind me, books I'm keeping, getting rid of, what genres these books are. I'm gonna be telling you exactly what I learned and then I'm gonna be answering some of your questions. I asked y'all over on Instagram earlier today if you had any questions about this challenge. I've been keeping it pretty hush-hush over the past year about the fact that I'm doing this challenge, but I decided to finally ask y'all if you had any questions and y'all had quite a few, so I'll be answering those at the end of today's video. Uh, but first let's start out with why I decided to take on this challenge. It comes down to two things. Number one, I was feeling incredibly overwhelmed by all of the books on my shelf. I feel like this is not a unique experience, maybe amongst people who have been in the book community for a while. I started out in 2017 on Goodreads, getting into reviewing there. And then in 2018, I came onto YouTube and started making book related content. And it was such an interesting experience coming into a kind of pre-established place with a lot of like pre-established, not rules so much or guidelines, uh, but just pre pre-established ways of doing things. I feel like booktube used to be a really small community and it seemed like everyone did things fairly similarly. It seemed like people had these beautiful expansive bookshelves behind them with tons of books on them and I wanted to be that kind of person. I wanted to be able to film in front of a pretty setup with a ton of books. So I kind of used that as my opportunity and my excuse, I suppose you could say, to buy books. It was interesting. On the one hand, I was like criticizing people who had these perfect setups and who overconsumed. And on the other hand, I was searching like thrift books, half price books, any like discount book shop to buy books to fill my shelves. And I wasn't very discerning when I picked out the books that I was going to add to my collection. If someone mentioned a book once and it sounded familiar enough to me, I would purchase it at like two or three dollars a piece. And my books were just stuffed to the brim for so long with books that I maybe had a passing interest but wasn't super excited about. And it was just overwhelming to me. And over the years, I've like culled some of these books. I've gotten rid of some of them. But there's a lot that have just hung around that I have actually had some sort of interest in. Books that I have heard more than one person talk about. Books that I was actually excited about myself. Um, so the books that I have behind me are books that are kind of a mix. I have some books that I was so hyped to read and just like hadn't gotten around to. And then there's a lot of books here that I honestly probably would have been fine not reading at all. And then the second reason <laughs> that I decided to take on this challenge is that I honestly miss the joy of book buying. Part of it is being overwhelmed by my shelves, obviously, and, and just wanting to kind of get through the bulk majority of the books that I own. But a bigger part of it really was that I want to enjoy book buying again. It seems maybe counterintuitive, like this is rampant over consumerism, but also I want to enjoy book buying. I feel like I was hearkening back to my days as a kid when my parents used to take me to uh, Barnes and Noble. They would give me a set budget that I could spend on books and I would have to kind of puzzle through what books I could afford to get. Uh, if I wanted to get a hardback book versus a paperback, do I need to wait for that hardcover book to come out in paperback? I had to do all these calculations in my head and I was so excited to go home with like, you know, two or three books and read through those books and then beg my parents to go back to Barnes and Noble. I never really left books languishing on my shelves that I hadn't read. That just was not a thing. That made the Barnes and Noble shopping experience, the book buying experience back in the day, just so much more enjoyable. I love loved shopping for books and seeing my collection grow to be books that I enjoyed. I did donate books that I didn't enjoy. Um, that was definitely a part of my experience as well, but getting to go to Barnes & Noble, getting to see my shelves grow, it was just, it was a delight. I feel like I'm a shill for Barnes & Noble, that's what I'm sounding like, but that was like the only bookstore for me back in the day. Now we have online buying options, obviously, but I just miss that. I want to go back to that. I want to have, you know, maybe like five to ten unread books on my shelves. And I was hoping that by getting to zero books unread that I could reset my baseline and, you know, become that person that I used to be, that person that would only have a couple of unread books on their shelves at one time. So that was the why behind it. I was feeling overwhelmed and I wanted to get excited about book buying again. I know, maybe potentially strange motivations, but that was what was really driving me. Now let's talk about how it went. So I feel like I need to start out with a bit of a preamble here. I set out to read a specific portion of my unread books. I inherited, or Hayden and I, my husband and I, inherited a set of classic novels from his grandparents. I did not intend to read those as a part of my unread book challenge. I also didn't seek to continue with some of the longer fantasy series that I have on my shelves. I think I have like two or three unread Cassandra Clare books. I didn't really want to go back and reread all of her backlist to get to those books this year. Just wasn't really on my to-do list. I will say I also culled 62 books before and during this challenge. So in January I selected I would say like 30-ish books that I just wasn't really interested in even attempting to read. And then I also selected about 30 books in July that I was also thinking I just I don't really care if I get to these. So with the preamble out of the way, how exactly did it go? How many books do I have behind me? How many did I actually read? 
I have 193 books behind me. And no, like the video title says, I did not actually get to all of them, but I did pretty damn good. Of the 193 books behind me, I read 144 of them, and I unfortunately did not get to 49 of those. All of the books on this side are the ones that I did read, and then there is a small kind of column right here of books that I did not read. I read those 144 books behind me in random intervals throughout the year. I didn't have much of a rhyme or reason in place, and my results on whether or not I enjoyed the books was pretty mixed. So in terms of star ratings, I had two one-star reads, I had 35 two-star reads, I had 49 three-star reads, I had 20 four-star reads, I had 11 five-star reads, I didn't finish 16 books, I started them and didn't finish them, and then I didn't rate 11 books. Now, these statistics alone, I didn't really know what to make of them. To be honest, I don't really look at my overall star ratings in a given year. Sometimes I look at the average, I think that's some information that Goodreads typically gives to us. But I wanted to kind of like puzzle through my thoughts and feelings on these books as compared to books that I've read that I didn't physically own. And we actually have a really good point of comparison this year because 144 books is a lot, don't get me wrong, but I read 136 books that I do not physically own this year, fairly even numbers, and so I decided to look at the breakdown of star readings for the books that I didn't physically own to see if there were any differences. I assumed that the books that I didn't physically own I would like more because those are books that um, are more recent selections like Kindle Unlimited Reads, new romance releases, things like that. So I really assumed that the star rating spread would be completely different for the books that I physically own versus don't physically own in 2022. But as you can see with a side-by-side -side comparison, the numbers are pretty similar. I did have more four and five star reads from the books that I don't have behind me, um, the books that I just decided to pick up on a whim this year, but I was kind of shocked to see that I had a fairly even, I would say, enjoyment level between the books that I physically own and the books that I didn't physically own. I don't, I feel like there's not a good way to say those things, but you understand what I'm saying. But I think that kind of lines up with how I was thinking about this reading experience, thinking about how I felt about these books. There were some definite duds in the books that I own, but there were also definite duds in the books that I don't own that I read this year and vice versa. I also had a lot of books that I read that I own that I enjoy and also I read a lot of books that I don't own that I enjoyed this year. So, you know, overall it was like a, a fairly even spread amongst the books that I do and don't own. Before we get into the things that I learned, I know a lot of y'all have been curious what books I'm keeping and what books I am not keeping and the proportions of those, the genres of those. So let me break it down for you. So in the fuck it bucket, the books that I am unhauling, as you saw in the beginning of the video, I'm getting rid of 89 of those books. I'm getting rid of 21 contemporary and paranormal romances, 18 historical romances, 16 YA contemporaries, 13 YA fantasies, 10 mystery, thriller, or horror books, 5 adult fantasies, 1 manga, 4 adult contemporaries slash literary fiction books, and 1 nonfiction book. And I don't really have strict parameters around why I am getting rid of what books. The things that I asked myself when I threw these books in certain buckets was, did I like this book and would I reread it again? The reread factor is pretty important to me because there are some books that I'm getting rid of that I gave like three stars to that I just don't see myself picking up again. So I am going to be unhauling them for that reason. And then also, would this be a book that I would lend to a friend or a child in my life, right? Like if I have a child, if they're a middle grade book that I didn't totally connect with that they might connect with, I might keep it for that reason. But there's not really strict reasons as to why I'm keeping what books, but I would say the majority of the books that I'm getting rid of are books that I just like didn't really enjoy. Just comes down to that. There's no like strict star rating, like two stars are all gone or three stars are all gone. You know, it's just like what the vibe was what I'm feeling like getting rid of. Now in my keep it bucket, I'm sure you can do the calculation there, I am keeping 55 books. I am keeping 13 YA and middle grade fantasies, six mystery thrillers, 13 contemporary romances, eight adult fantasies, four classics, three YA contemporaries, three nonfiction books, two literary slash adult contemporary fiction books, one sequential art book, and two historical romances. Now in terms of what genres I am getting rid of in a higher volume, I think it's pretty obvious I'm getting rid of quite a few historical romances and quite a few young adult contemporaries. I feel like that kind of checks out. For the Y contemporaries, it's just a genre that I don't connect with as much now in my old age. And then when it comes to historical romances, I found that I actually prefer consuming this genre of story in um, audiobook format. So some of the books I did actually enjoy, but I am going to be parting ways with. And honestly, I just, I have a lot of uh, historical romance duds in the books that I physically own. It just, it is what it is. And in terms of the 49 books that I did not get to this year, it's kind of a weird mix of things. I would say we have 
have a fair amount of adult fantasy. We have the entire Stormlight Archive series, barring The Way of Kings, because I did read that one. And then we have 20 historical romances right here that I got in an eBay mystery box and just never got around to reading. And to be honest, I'll probably unhaul these. So I think it's really more like, what, 29 books that I didn't get to? I mean, I didn't get to these, but like, I, I don't really intend to read these. I thought I, I thought I was going to, but I'm not going to. Let's talk about the things I learned, because I feel like that is what is most relevant here. Stats are fun. Stats are exciting. But uh, let me let me tell you, let me tell you what I actually learned from this experience. First up, tastes are constantly evolving and I want my shelves to be a reflection of my changing tastes. That's not to say that I want my shelves to only have my contemporary, like the in the moment loves that I have. I want to have books on my shelves that I have read before and have enjoyed before. Because to me, it's fun to look at a book and think, wow, I, I remember loving that 12 years ago. It's really nice having that on my shelf and seeing how my taste has changed. I would much prefer that to picking up a book, reading it, and then realizing, wow, my taste has really changed. Does that make sense? It's like, I would prefer the books on my shelves to be books that I currently enjoy or books that really evoke a sense of nostalgia. I don't want a bunch of stuff on my shelves that like doesn't spark joy, that aren't things that I want to actually pick up in the moment. You know, I feel like that's not exactly groundbreaking news, but is something that I've learned from this experience. Something I didn't expect to learn, something maybe a little bit less obvious, is that I actually do still want to challenge my taste in books. I thought I would come away from a challenge like this thinking I only want to read adult contemporary romance because that is really my bread and butter. That's something that I have really grown to love here on my channel. I didn't start out that way. I feel like I mostly read YA fantasy when I started on this channel. And, and this year especially, I've been thinking to myself, God, I can't wait until 2023. I'm only gonna want to read adult romance. and. Uh, well, I definitely do want to read a lot of adult romance. I feel like this challenge really pushed me to read books that were outside of my comfort zone. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here that I probably uh, wouldn't pick up on a whim, but being forced to read in a variety of genres really has opened my taste a little bit and has taught me, hey, like, yeah, you, you love romance for sure. Romance is your bread and butter, but there's other things that you should push yourself to pick up, like the Stormlight Archive series, right? There's some books that I would love to pick up in 2023 and actually finish off the series. I really actually like adult fantasy. I didn't think that that was a thing that I would love as much as I do, but that's something that I want to read more of in 2023. I want to read adult fantasy. I want to read more mystery thrillers. I want to just push myself to pick up things that uh, sound good in the moment, you know? I want to push myself to read outside of my genre comfort zone. Maybe not purchase those books <laughs> immediately, but you know, not just pick up romance. Branch out a little bit, have a little bit of fun. Number three, if you decide to take on a challenge like this, if you are a fellow content creator, it will affect your content, or at least it did for me, both positively and negatively. So in picking up books that I physically owned, I had to get creative with the kinds of videos that I was going to put out to hopefully entice people to watch, which doesn't sound that different than usual, except it kind of was. So let's say I am reading a ton of hyped romances, a ton of books that people are really excited about in a present moment. I don't have to get as creative with the kinds of videos that I'm putting out. I can just publish a typical reading vlog and more people are going to click on it because these are books that are exciting to people in a given moment. Now, if I'm reading six thrillers that were published, I don't know, six years ago, that content is going to be less likely to find a home. Who's really looking for that kind of stuff? Who really cares about my thoughts and feelings on books that were published, I don't know, six years ago? So I had to get creative with the kinds of videos I was making around those sorts of books. Sometimes that went really well and sometimes that didn't go well at all. Some videos like my I Read 5 content where I read the longest books on my TBR and the shortest books on my TBR pushed me to read books that I physically own and also had pretty good results in terms of views. While others like my Choose Your Own Adventure video where I read a ton of thrillers this year and my Jane Austen book boyfriend video kind of flopped. Now I can't say that I noticed a really strong pattern. It wasn't like every time I picked up books off of my physical TBR and read them. People weren't watching the videos. That definitely wasn't the case, but it did seem that the more creative videos that I did in 2022, if they were about more recent books, books that I don't physically own, those videos tended to perform or outperform pretty much everything else on my channel. So um, that's definitely something I'm going to keep in the snoggin and use <laughs> to my advantage next year. Creative videos for books that people want to read is like really the key to success. You know, I mean, I feel like that shouldn't be shocking, but mixed results with the stuff behind me, mixed results. But I did have to get creative, which, you know, no, not a bad thing. Number four, it didn't actually change my relationship with reading all that much. Now, I will say I definitely had preconceived notions going into this about how I would feel at the end. I assumed that I would hate the majority of the books that I would have to read, but I also thought that I would feel supremely accomplished if I was able to read all of the books that I physically own. But I didn't finish all of the books and I didn't hate all of them either. I think your experience is obviously going to vary if you take on something like this in terms of how much of a chore it is to read all of the books that you physically own when you're just desperate to read a new release or something that your friend 
friend is talking about, but for me, this wasn't really that far of a departure from what I normally do here on my channel. I like to take on list videos where I'm reading like books from a Goodreads list. I do that fairly often. A lot of those books are not books that I am super, super hyped to read, so I feel like I've kind of trained myself to pick up books that I'm not like 100% excited about, so it wasn't actually that much of a chore to read these books, and honestly, I had similar luck reading these compared to the books that I picked up that I don't physically own, as we kind of talked about in the stats portion of this video, so I actually didn't change my relationship with reading that much. I didn't hate the books, I didn't loathe reading them, it didn't take me longer to read these books than it did any of the other books that I've read this year. Kind of shocked me. I mean, you think there'd be a bigger takeaway here, but you know, I read the books and it didn't suck. Number five, even if my reading habits didn't change, my book buying habits certainly did and will going forward. So I didn't come away from this challenge not wanting to buy books ever again. I think going into this, I assumed I like wouldn't want to buy any more books, honestly, or that I would like majorly scale back on my book buying in the future, which I kind of did for a portion of 2022. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the Q&A section, but really what I'm doing going forward isn't revolutionary. I'm working right now on buying books that I have read in the past couple of years that I have really loved and enjoyed and want to see on my shelves, which means a lot of traditionally published contemporary romances, a lot of indie published contemporary romances. I want to support the authors that I love. and I would love to see these shelves filled with just colorful, beautiful contemporary romances. And I'd like to make sure that if I do purchase books that I haven't read before, that they're books that I'm excited about, whether it's because I love this author, whether it's because the back of the book sounds exciting to me. I want to have no more than 10 unread new books at any given time though. We're going to exclude these from that list, but I only want to have 10 unread books at any given time. I want to go back to that childhood wonder, that sense of nostalgia, that excitement I had in book buying. And I think this has really gotten me excited to buy books again. It's probably why I went so crazy in Barnes & Noble a couple days ago, but you know, that's what it is. I'm going to, I'm taking, I'm taking away lessons, just not like very big ones. I still like books. Okay. I'm still going to buy books. Now let's get into the questions that y'all had about this experience. So number one, do you wish you had been more choosy in buying books? And this is a tough one for me because I am someone I feel like who tends not to regret a lot of things. I, I felt like going into this video that I would have very strong emotions and opinions on this experience that I would have a lot that I've learned from this. And it's not that I haven't learned anything about myself, but I feel like honestly, it was just a fun challenge. Like at the end of the day, that's kind of how I feel about it. When it comes to being choosier about buying books, it's something that in hindsight, like, yeah, it would have been nice to not have all of these books that I'm like less interested in reading now. But I also remember how it felt in that time in my life and like how I desperately wanted to be like everybody else that I was watching on booktube at the time. Side note, kind of tangent, I think that's something that's really awesome now about how booktube and booktalk and all of these different platforms are kind of expanding and growing the amount of people online talking about books. Not everybody looks the same, not all of our shelves look the same, not everyone's filming in front of bookshelves anymore, and I think that's really awesome. I think if I were starting like, you know, today, I probably wouldn't have the same drive to buy a ton of books, and I think maybe I would be choosier. It's, it's really hard to say though, you know, it's really hard to say if I would have done things differently. I think like ideally, yeah, like I wouldn't have all this crap behind me that I'm getting rid of, but at the same time, I don't know, it was, it was a it was a fun time in my life. I'm just glad to be past that, I guess. So I'll be more choosy in the future, but I don't necessarily like regret being less choosy back in the day. Second question, do you think you will keep buying books you don't know much about? And do you expect to have as many unread books in future years? So the kind of latter part of that, the second question, as I kind of touched on, I want to have only like 10 unread books at any given time. I don't really know how I'm going to like police that in the future, how I'm going to like monitor that. I did a pretty good job, I would say, at tracking my books this year because I was taking on this challenge and I'm hoping by kind of like cataloging my library, continuing to do that into the future, that um, I will not have as many unread books in the future. It's really hard to say, but I would hope that that would be kind of the outcome. And do I think I will keep buying books I don't know much about? That's something that I think has changed a little bit, something that I'm going to do a little bit differently. I do kind of miss walking into a bookstore and not knowing anything about the books on the shelves because like, I don't know, Goodreads didn't exist at the time. There, were, there weren't really people talking about books except for like a handful of my friends, right, that I could get recommendations from. And so that was part of the joy of going to Barnes & Noble was like picking up a book off the shelf, reading the inside flap, reading the back of the book, getting excited about what was, you know, in store and like not knowing if it was going to be good or not. That was really exciting to me. I would like to get back to that. I would like to do more of that and less of taking recommendations from people, which I think sounds kind of like strange and counterintuitive, but that's something that I've kind of already been doing, I would say, as time has gone on. As someone who reviews books on the internet, it's not that I never want to take recommendations from people. In fact, I get a lot of recommendations from people who I'm pretty close with or like my patrons. They always have great book recommendations, but I think I am taking fewer recommendations from people who 
don't have the same taste as me. I know, shocking. But I feel like when I first started, there weren't a lot of people online talking about um, adult contemporary romance. There were definitely people, but I would say the majority of people were talking about YA stuff. Like that was what was more popular back when I first started. I would just, you know, like pick up books having heard like one thing about them because they were cheap and um, I ended up not knowing anything about those books in that case. Um, so I'm gonna do less of that. I'm gonna do less of like taking random recommendations or like picking up a book that I don't know anything about because I randomly heard one person talking about it. Like I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to walk into a bookstore. I'm going to read the back of a romance, not really know anything about it, not having heard recommendations about it and just pick it up because it sounds exciting. Like that's what I'm gonna be doing going forward. I don't know if that distinction really makes sense, but in general, I think my book buying habits have already kind of changed the way that I like approach book buying and, and approach recommendations in general. So yeah, I'm still gonna pick up books that I don't know anything about, but I'm not gonna have like a whole host of them and I'm not going to take recommendations on books that I don't know anything about from people if that makes sense. You would think that like if you're getting the recommendations from someone you would know something about the book but things just kind of go in one ear and out the other sometimes for me so <laughs> uh, hopefully that answered that question. Now three or four questions that all kind of tie in together. You plan on sourcing books in other ways. What did you do when you had the urge to buy and read a new release? Do you feel like you missed some excitement from only reading what you had? So I think I kind of touched on this a little bit in the statistics part of this video, but I did not only read my physical TBR this year. Two categories of books that I read were pretty evenly matched among books that I physically owned and read and then, you know, the books that I didn't physically own but read. I think, what was it, like 136 and 144. So I didn't really feel like I missed any excitement um, from only reading what I had. And then what did I do when I had the urge to buy and read a new release? This one was a little bit tricky and this one actually did kind of influence my buying patterns. I talked about it a little bit in the statistics portion of the video. Again, I knew that if I brought a book into my life this past year, I was going to have to read it this year, or at least I was hoping to read it this year. So I had to be kind of discerning about the books that I brought into my life. I had to kind of push some of the new releases off a little bit. But honestly, like when I'm thinking about it, I didn't really have to not read new releases. Um, I just had to read them pretty immediately after getting them. And since I was so excited about them, it wasn't that big of a deal. I think the tough thing was working with book of the month this year. I love working with book of the month and most of the book of the month books that I read this year were awesome but I was getting two selections every other month and so that was kind of a lot of books to be bringing in frequently that weren't new releases that I was like gonna go out and buy myself so it was kind of tricky like I was excited to bring new books into my life but I was also like oh my god it's getting overwhelming the amount of like new releases and stuff that I have I honestly probably should have calculated that like the amount of new releases and new books that I obtained in 2022 that I read and I wonder if that would like honestly offset the amount of books that I didn't read and didn't get to that I didn't buy in 2022. That being said, another challenge that I was kind of attempting to take on this year, and I sort of did, but I didn't end up like filming a video on it, was I actually didn't spend more than like $20 <laughs> this year on books. I got, again, new releases from Book of the Month. I got a lot of releases from Kindle Unlimited, which I pay for at the beginning of the year or like the year end of a year. I just purchased Kindle Unlimited for an entire year in December, and that's normally what I do. So like I'll do it a year in advance. Um, so I, I didn't spend any money on Kindle Unlimited technically this year either. Um, so Kindle Unlimited, Book of the Month. I also had sold a ton of my books to Half Race Books at the beginning of the year, uh, books that I knew I wasn't going to read. So I had a little bit of cash and I used that cash to spend on new releases this year. So I really didn't actually spend that much money on books. I, I didn't make a whole video on it, but I just thought I would throw that in here that um, I didn't I didn't buy a lot of books, but the ones that I did buy, I was really excited about and I did end up getting to. And then do I plan on sourcing books in other ways? I did actually source books in other ways this year. I relied heavily on my library to get through some of these books actually, um, especially some of these like big fantasy books. I ended up checking out audiobooks or ebooks of the mass market paperbacks that I have. I'm sorry, but I really realized this year I do not like holding these in my hands. They hurt my eyes. They're not fun to read in bed. So if I could find an ebook copy of a book that I physically owned, I would read the ebook version and just count it as read because you know I read it, but just in a different format. So um, yes, I already source books in different ways. This was a really interesting year in terms of my reading. Like I read a lot of physical books. I checked out a lot of stuff from my library and uh, I purchased just a handful of new releases I was really excited about. Are there any genres or authors you're not really interested in reading more of now after reading your backlist? I feel like I am much less interested in historical romance now and it's not that I don't like historical romance. I feel like I just got sucked into the hype when it comes to the pretty like step backs for historical romances. This is a step back if you are uh, unfamiliar or uninitiated but in 2020 when the pandemic hit I think a lot of us like couldn't go out and buy books and so we were ordering a lot of books online and 
I got sucked into like buying eBay mystery boxes full of these historical romance paper bags and I have a lot of respect for this kind of cover. I think this is stunning but I have found that I don't like reading in this format. This is not a format that I enjoy reading um, so why would I keep them on my shelves? And also I just really prefer listening to historical romance audiobooks. I found myself not picking up the historical romances I had because I don't like reading in this format and a lot of them are just not available in audiobook. I mean, at least none of this deck right here and a lot of the, the books that I didn't get to. So it's not that I dislike historical romance, but I feel like the ones that I read this year, I, I just had a lot of duds. I had a lot of duds that I didn't enjoy and um, I think I'll be more discerning going forward with the ones that I do pick up. And then obviously like I already knew that I wasn't as into YA contemporary now as I was in the past. And that makes sense. Like I'm getting older, not to shade anyone who reads YA contemporary and is like older than me or the same age as me or whatever. Um, it's just not something I connect with anymore. Anymore. It's just not something that I will be picking up in the future. I'll probably be unhauling any uh, Y contemporaries in that like stack of 49. Yeah, that's something I didn't really touch on, but of the 49 books that I have, I will probably be getting rid of more than half. I'm gonna be keeping some of them for sure, but I'm not, I'm just not as excited to read some of these. It's like now that the year is over, I am so excited to take these to first books and just not think about them anymore. First and best book that you read <laughs> for this challenge. So I would say best is kind of hard because some of my favorite romances and favorite books this year were books that I physically owned, whether that was books that I got from Book of the Month or books that I bought on my own. But The Roughest Draft, Killers of a Certain Age, The Way of Kings, and Love on the Brain all made it to my best of list and were all books that I really enjoyed. And then my worst book is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Tessa Moshfe. I really didn't like this book. I really didn't enjoy the ending of this book and it was a book that I picked out based on hype. So I mean, who's surprised, who's shocked? What book did you want to get rid of immediately after finishing? Because of the nature of this video, because at the end of each month I dumped books into my fuck it bucket, um, I knew pretty immediately that I was going to be getting rid of these books. And honestly, like once I finish a book, I have a gut feeling. I'm like, oh, this is staying with me or I hated this book. Sometimes, you know, there's like a neutral book, but if it's neutral, like why keep it? You know, it's like I either love it or I get rid of it. It is pretty much like my approach to it. So do I regret setting this as a goal and was it worth it? I don't regret doing this. Actually, when I sat down today to film, I wasn't super excited to film. I'll be 100% transparent. And then I sat down, kind of put the books in piles and I was like, wow, you know, I feel accomplished. I don't know if it was worth it, but I'm glad that I did it. And I'm excited to feel free, like to feel free of these books, to get to purchase books in my preferred genre again and to like have my shelves be filled up with books that I really genuinely enjoy. I'm very excited about that. Um, so I don't think I regret setting it as a goal. Was it worth it? I mean, worth is kind of like a <laughs> hard, hard thing to quantify, I think, but yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it was worth it. Let's go with that. Did I get into any slumps? So I did want to touch on this because I did get into slumps and it wasn't actually because of the books. It was because of things going on in my life. 2022 turned out to be a really interesting, weird, good, bad year. I got married in April of this year and a lot of the months leading up to it were stress and anxiety filled and I just like didn't really read much. I think in February I read like eight books, which is unheard of for me. I typically read 20 plus books in, in a month. So yeah, there were definitely some slow months for me and uh, my cat, my best friend passed away in September. And so the past part of the year, like the past few months have been really hard emotionally for me. I've been kind of depressed. And the only thing I've really wanted to pick up is uh, Kindle Unlimited Romances, which makes reading my physical TBR hard. So I did get into slumps and that's why I wasn't able to read all of these books. Given the amount of books that I read this year, like obviously if I hadn't read so many like comfort reads or like books I wanted to read, I could have easily finished these, right? Because like, I read 136 books that aren't behind me um, and I only have 49 that I didn't get to. So I could have read them, but slumps kind of prevented me from getting to them. Will I continue this into 2023? No, I will not. Didn't hate this challenge or anything, but again, I'm getting rid of a lot of these 49 books. The other books I want to pick up when I want to pick them up. A Stormlight Archive I want to get through next year. I'm not gonna like put pressure on myself to, to read them because honestly, like, I'm not gonna make another one of these videos. And like, if it's not for a video, what's the point? That's not true. But yeah, I don't really anticipate continuing this in 2023. I do wanna read the books that I own, obviously, especially if I bring any new books into my life, but um, I'm not gonna take on like reading this many books uh, that I own for a challenge again. <laughs> Cause hopefully I won't have that many unread books, right? And then lastly, any tips for accomplishing something like this slash reading through your physical TBR? And if you redid the challenge, what would you do differently? I do think I could have approached this differently. It's it's hard to say that like I could have approached it 100% differently because I can't change the circumstances that happened this year. I can't change the like, you know, big events that happened in my life. But I think if I were to recommend to you how to take on this challenge and like what I would do, 
I would sit down, look at your physical CBR, immediately call the books that you don't think you have any interest in reading. That will definitely set you up for success. And then divide the number of books that you have by months in a year and then try to go from there. I think that's like the, the easiest way to do it for sure. And that's normally how I would approach things. It's kind of surprising that I didn't, but this year was kind of a mess. Uh, typically I would set out to do things on a monthly basis and then I would try to break things down into a weekly basis as well. Like, okay, I need to read four books for my physical TBR this week. I can do this. Let's, let's get it knocked out. I'd also probably look at the page length and things as well. Not try to like overload myself with really long things right at the beginning. I would also try to take on like readathons or challenges. I think even if you're not a content creator, that can be really, really fun. And that was a way that I was able to kind of get through some stuff, I think easier. Taking on that video where I read <laughs> the longest books on my TBR, I think helped me get through stuff that I probably wouldn't have willingly picked up on my own. Break things down into small chunks and you can absolutely do it. Taking on this challenge showed me what I'm capable of. I love doing stuff like this. Hopefully I won't ever take anything <laughs> on this big in the future. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. If you have any additional questions about this challenge, let me know in the comments down below. An unhaul is coming. I know some of y'all will ask in the comments uh, for that. An unhaul is certainly coming and I'm gonna let you know what books I'm getting rid of. And uh, I'm also gonna have a book haul of the books that I purchased <laughs> in my excitement for this year to be over. If you wanna see an office reorganization video, uh, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I'm going to be doing that on my $10 tier. It's gonna be kind of like a monthly behind the scenes sort of thing. And I'll show you how I'm reorganizing my office and doing some like fun stuff around here. But in general, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for your support throughout the year. Thank you for clicking on the videos where I read some of these books for my physical TBR. I hope it was fun to watch, even if the books weren't that fun and exciting. Couldn't be more excited for 2023. I have a goals video coming and uh, just excited for everything that's ahead. But I love y'all so much and until next time.